Hey, Taylor, you know, thanks so much for uh, joining us in our little scenic tour of Amsterdam in our uh, fancy Audi. Um, uh, why don't you, you know, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about who you are. Yeah, so my name is Taylor Dolezal. I'm the head of ecosystem at the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. And yeah, it's been fun throwing this very small little conference here. Yeah, in, right, right. <laughs> in yeah. Amsterdam. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, you and 12,000 of your closest friends, right? <laughs> it's um, a, yeah, it's a birthday party. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I can't imagine. That would be that would be a very large birthday party. <laughs> so, okay, so uh, what I always have to ask is kind of like, all right, what what does an ecosystem mean? So, yeah, yeah. So the so our ecosystem, I, it's it, there's so much to focus on within the cloud native community. Honestly, mm -hmm. there's the either there are pro, they're the projects, they're the people, the working groups, the tags, so many different things. I'm mostly focused on the end users, uh, our end user members, the people that are pulling down cloud native technologies and using them to power their business and their mm -hmm. platform. They're not taking it and reselling it. They're not consultancies. They're folks like Mercedes, Audi, mm -hmm. Airbnb. Reddit, and they're actually using that to leverage their business, make it up level up essentially. And and so, what's been, um, you know, so you, I think you said you've been doing this about a year or something. What's what's been the kind of most pronounced? I mean, you know, customers are lovely and everything, but it's it's one of the things that uh, comes up a lot for us with Kubernetes is kind of like it's a kind of a change in thinking, a change in uh, style. How have you seen that move, or how has that been, you know, in your experience? It's been really interesting, honestly. So, folks, the the whole argument for open source has been won for for many years. Yeah. Now. So yeah. that's very, that's yeah. the most exciting thing is right. to have people align in that vision. And now it's about level setting around. Okay, I've achieved Kubernetes. It's like no, 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 that's not the finish line. Yeah, <laughs> right. you've said there's you've so much more. The box. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's that's what's most fun is hearing what workflows people are adopting, seeing where contributions are going now too, because there was. Uh, Seeing, seeing the uh, focus on Kubernetes, it, so it's stable. There's mm -hmm. not as much need to come in and, and develop out things. And so you see those contributions go down a bit, but that's a good thing. It's the right, tapering right. off, it's the hardening. And so with that happening, people are focusing on Argo, open telemetry, backstage, these other areas that need, you know, attention, focus, and code contributions and discussion. Right. Um, yeah, it's funny how you say, you know, kind of open source is kind of one. I mean, because, uh, you know, I'm I, biased, I, I <laughs> well, we, well, I, we were doing it. I was doing an interview with somebody else, um, you know, who kind of uh, grew up in tech uh, kind of the same way I did. And we were, we both are like just blown away by like, um, you know, like we both remember when when open source was like banned in most of the organizations we worked with. Uh, like it was not okay to be using it, uh, and it's like just so different now. It's just crazy. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of interesting. I do I do wonder how much of that checking of the box, uh, you know, for Kubernetes uh, is kind of a you know happens a lot. I imagine, um, and that's been it seems like kind of your experience. Um, is there anything else that you found has been particularly, you know, kind of like that, you know, or anything else that, you know, has really, I don't know, made you look look forward to the future? Like, what are you looking for next? Yeah. So w with with what's next, I think that looking at edge computing, internal development platforms, that's what a lot of the discussions are about future states right now. And then one that is still kind of a, a stumbling block for some organizations, and I've, I've dealt with that in, in past roles, is um, how to how to approach the the conversation of business value. Mm -hmm. So that because a lot of engineers and, and engineering teams also get it, they understand mm -hmm. the why behind Kubernetes and cloud native and how to work with many of these technologies. But when it comes to advocating for it and pitching that within their internal corporations. Uh, organizations, it can be difficult because right. uh, you might have executives who are like, oh, we did this 15 years ago. It was a, <laughs> it, it just went so poorly. Right. And so there's still that like uh, a little bit of that uh, historical context that needs to be broken. They're like, no, 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 it's different now right. for real. Here's right. why. Here's what it is. You know, we can run much more than WordPress on it. Uh, <laughs> just all those conversations. Yeah, we, um, yeah, there's a there's some of that uh, legacy from kind of that service oriented architecture days of the uh, you know when you know everything was top down right and and I think one of the things is that um, you know Kubernetes is kind of like on the fence in the sense like 
if you get into containers, um, you know, that's very kind of bottom up, right? But then eventually, if you use containers enough, you start to notice that, oh my God, I cannot manage all these things. And so you need something like Kubernetes. But Kubernetes, you can you can kind of do in small bits, right? And then keep adding to it. Um, and is that how you've seen the growth happen? Or, or are you mostly seeing kind of a, an all-in commitment from like an organization at first? That's what's been. Uh, that, that's that's a great question. There's there's been that want for some organizations to have the entire playbook ready, <laughs> and that's just that doesn't you know you can do that. It just yeah. takes a lot longer. Yeah, I was uh, an old friend of mine, a Python maintainer. Like he used to tell the story about an organization he was at where he, like they did that. They did the whole top down <laughs> thing and it worked. And I was like, really? <laughs> like, yeah, like, do tell. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so he had all these war stories about you know kind of doing this. At, at the full, like the right way, you know, and, and I was just so blown away about how it actually, like he actually, they pulled it off. I was like, okay. Um, <laughs> Yeah, because it's so unusual, it's right? Like, Normally, we did, we did waterfall deployments using agile. So right. Yeah. Right. It's like, right. oh, what did you do? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm I'm always super impressed if somebody can actually pull that off. Um, but I would say it's it's definitely uncommon. Um, <laughs> so that's been. But so you're kind of seeing like the pieces come in and and people getting participated and then like it, essentially adoption over time. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That it's really just starting small and then iterating up to transform or change folks' workflows, essentially. Yeah, yeah. And uh, do you have any specific war stories about that? I'm trying to think. It's, yeah. I, I'm, I'm certain I do. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> uh, to, fr from personal experience, when I was at Disney Studios, that was, mm -hmm. I saw a lot of woes on that front, and that was a lot of our internal transformation there while I worked there. Mm -hmm. Um, we had, you know, over hundreds of applications, and so it was, we, well, we deploy things a little bit differently here on every single team, oh, which yeah, was, yeah. like, the, untenable yeah. for uh, a team of five systems engineers, which we were right, when I got right. there. So we had aligned pretty early on, we want to simplify this, we want to use Kubernetes, and that became our common language to work with teams and share concepts, and mm -hmm. there was a lot of reluctance at first as any change, but... Right. It was nice to really align with those folks, and uh, at the end of it, after all the struggles had been gone through, they're like, "Hey, this actually works really well. This is really, really, really yeah, no, we weren't trying to like, make it hard or yeah, you exactly. or push you through something. It wasn't intentionally painful. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, yeah. It's like that's yeah. just what good learning feels like. Right, right, right. <laughs> uh, yeah, one of the things. Uh, so you know, I think we mentioned. You know, I've definitely mentioned on the show before, but like I teach at Boston University, and uh, one of the things that we do periodically as part of one of the programs I'm involved in. Uh, is uh, these uh, kind of ideation sessions. And one of the things that I think is so fascinating about Cloud Native is, you know, they kind of walk into the room with their idea and, and you know, we kind of have a few different perspectives. And so, like, I'm usually there for, like, the tech perspective. And, you know, with Cloud Native, one of the things that I think a lot of the students have a really hard time wrapping their head around is, like, you know, no, no, no. You want to write as little code as humanly possible, right? We want, we want to, you know, actually kind of capture all the other code that's all over the internet, you know, either as APIs or things like Kubernetes or whatever, so that you're writing this little shim that's like pulling it all together. <laughs> um, and especially for like an MVP, if you want to do a startup, um, you know, how was your experience with uh, some of that in, you know, like places like Disney or with some of the people you've been talking to? Is that a Interest or an easy concept or a common concept or is it more a lot of people doing big iron development and then uh, you know and not realizing how much easier it could be? And definitely the latter. I think that it's the it's the, it, it is those light bulb moments and that's that's truly what I live for too, yeah, right, to see that right. spark like oh you know once yeah. you're able to share that idea and and kind of like have that buy in with someone the it's. I think as it, as it pertains to writing less code and figuring out the right pieces to put together, a lot of that has been figuring out the right way to shift left because mm -hmm. uh, I used to shift left all the time when I was younger. I would just, I'd be told to clean my room and I'd push everything into the closet. Uh, <laughs> good choice, <laughs> so, good choice. So there's, there's, you can get to a point where it's too, too much, too far, but 
that's uh, the delicate balance the teams are figuring yeah. out now. Yeah. And okay, do we have a platform team? Do we have a systems team? What makes sense? And how do we the the proper abstractions is mm -hmm. that's the most difficult thing. That's the art piece. That's the creative and slam poetry part of <laughs> <laughs> putting together yeah. a team. Yeah, uh, I th I think there's a isn't that, that's a common meme for people to refer to development as slam poetry, right? Um, <laughs> it's like we're gonna, yeah we're picking yeah. up. That's, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's my fetch. Yeah. Right, right. Um, the uh, the kind of related question I was just thinking about was, um, you know, the other problem with that kind of model, right, is like knowing kind of who to bet on. Mm -hmm. And it's even kind of harder in kind of the open source world <clears throat> where it's like, you know, will this technology um, be, you know, a thing in a year, right? Um, and so how do you talk to, you know, people in the kind of ecosystem about making those decisions or, you know, identifying good good bets, basically? Another great question. It's, uh, so if, yeah, if you need a lottery ticket. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the, it's, it's, it's really difficult, and that's one thing that this, I, I like that the CNCF has done is kind of bucket projects within different levels of maturity. So uh, we have sandbox, incubating, and graduated. Graduated is in incredibly safe bet. It's been yep. adopted by multiple industries. You, you're, you're, you've crossed the finish line and then some. As you start to take a look at incubating projects, you know, there are some sandbox projects that are in a good state, but right. they just haven't been used widely. They might right. be really code complete or coming from a really good engineering place or have a great developer experience. But I think that's that's the distinction that is always difficult to make. Um, yeah. But really, what I'm seeing is that it's uh, as as a foundation, we don't pick uh, we don't pick winners. We're not mm -hmm. kingmakers, and that's been an interesting thing to take a look at and balance too. Because when I was at end user organizations, that's what I wanted. I right. wanted the recommended oh, yeah. architecture. Like, please yeah. just give me the guide. I'm interested in how I put all these things together. Yeah. And that's that's exactly a thing that we don't provide. But we and and I get why. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, now being being inside the organization, right. But. Right. Now it's about elevating folks and their stories, what they're doing, what they're putting together. So working with people to share the community guide of what they found worked for them and then pair that with a workflow. So that's uh, some upcoming content that we're making on that front and refurbishing our end user radar. That's Those are the kind of moves that we're making to help be a better coach within the community mm -hmm. and shed more insight on all of the ways in which people are accomplishing their workflows and workloads. Is there, um, I mean, kind of related to that, and I I don't think this exists, but uh, I'll ask the question anyway. Um, is there any, you know, ideas around, um, you know, levels of maturity of maybe consulting organizations that you can recommend who can recommend or give you recommendations? Is there any uh, thought around, you know, I don't know, at least kind of giving a list of, of organizations that you might want to go talk to? We do, we do have some uh, members of the organization that are consultancies and- Okay, yeah, that's, yeah. We, we just had some that joined, but I think that's that's a good starting guide and, and mm -hmm. really the only one that we have right now that, that's uh, easy to quantify. Though, it's I like that idea. I think yeah. that's something that has, has, I've heard that idea a few times and just, hey, could these, hey, you know- it was it was my idea. What? It's a, it's, no, it was, yeah, it's like, it I'm gonna cite you, unique. I'm gonna yes. cite you. <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, right, it's good. Right. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's. I think that because consultancies are working so much with these technologies, mm -hmm. it would be a shame to not hear how they're able to put things together or if they've been able to figure out a pattern that works really well. Right, right. Um, yeah, it's one of those things like, you know, I was in consulting for a long time. And one of the things, especially in those days when open source had most definitely not won, um, <laughs> was is like it, it was so difficult to share anything um, with, you know, except within one, you know, client, right? You know, they, they every client really wanted everything that you were involved with to be this completely locked down and, you know, IP protected and stuff. And I understand why that was their default choice, but I don't, I definitely didn't agree with it. Like there was so many, there were so many ways that we could have uh, found uh, to do some sharing without you know, violating their privacy at all, right? Um, and so I've still found that kind of difficult and depressing. Um, but, uh, you know, it's kind of, I was, that's why I was thinking about maybe, you know, is there a way you can kind of move that outside of the private, you know, enterprise? 
with with that, I think that we're seeing some being in a vendor neutral space and just everybody being aligned on cloud native as the end objective. Mm -hmm. We are seeing things like we have a marketing subcommittee, and so there are a whole bunch of folks that are marketing products from different companies. In mm -hmm. some cases, competing companies, but they're sharing best practices on how to market to folks, what to get involved in. Oh, and interesting. So, yeah. so you have these things where people, you know, kind of be going head to head with each other, but they're like, no, we we get it. And then you have these cool mashups, and you right. know, it's not like the you know, musical battles between artists kind of thing. <laughs> you know, it's a more collabs. Yeah. So yeah. I definitely want to see that. And I think the same thing is capable, uh, uh, possible when, when it comes to consultancies and figuring out a base because they'll all benefit from that, right? It's yeah. do you want to spend the time figuring out the the basement floor when y'all can work on it together? Right. It's like right. it's it's a win win for everybody. So I just want you to know that now I see the next like um, I don't know if you ever worked with uh, like local or like state government or whatever but you know you have this RFP process and there's always an RFP like meeting I can't remember what they used to call it but uh, basically where you can kind of go and ask questions before you actually like give your response to the proposal um, and so now what I'm envisioning is that meeting is actually taking place in an underground bar and they're doing it with slam poetry <laughs> you know yeah, on a houseboat yeah, <laughs> right, like, right. oh yeah yeah exactly uh, so that is now stuck in my head as how all consultants you know find out about whether or not they should bid on a project I just I can't wait to see your biopic and that be the story yeah, exactly exactly uh, so bringing it back to uh, you know Amsterdam uh, what are you most excited about or what has already happened at KubeCon uh, that you were you know really looking forward to or, you, or it still hasn't happened yet so what still hasn't happened yet is I, I, I've seen a couple of tulips, but definitely, uh, yeah. you know, definitely going to spending some time here afterwards. So really excited to check that out. That's cool. Uh, it's the, I, I heard about the bikes and the bicycles, but I had. It is, it is for reals, right? Overwhelmed. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, the only other times I've really been in Amsterdam, I was mostly like more towards the center where it's definitely not as pronounced, I don't think. Mm -hmm. I think it's because, you know, out here there, uh, you know, a lot more people are going to work on their bike, you know, um, and the even even for the bikes, the city streets downtown are too small, right? Um, but yeah, it's been pretty impressive. Do you, are you a biker at home? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, I uh, live in Los Angeles, so don't bike as much as I want to. To honestly, uh, uh, but um, done rag bri, biked across to Iowa. Oh, wow! And so it's uh, yeah, absolutely love biking when I get the chance to do so. But uh, probably do some of that here, and then yeah, it's on I think on Friday, uh, gonna check out one of the boats and just like take a little tour around the city. So it should be, nice. it should be yeah. beautiful, yeah. Um, yeah, I can't remember what I was here for last time. I do know that, so Amsterdam tends to have weather and also be a place that is a layover spot. So uh, uh, a colleague of mine and, you know, friend of mine, um, he and I got stuck here for like three days. Uh. And uh, I was like, in the grand scheme of things, I one of the better places to get stuck. Yes. Oh my oh, God, it was great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we, we actually <laughs> had a really Kansas. good time. Yeah, yeah. Like... <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> well, and, and you're you're on an airline's expense account, right? Which is also <laughs> yeah. nice, yeah. you know, um, rather than having to like, you know, fight it yeah. with the, the company back home. Uh, so that's that was pretty cool. Um, so uh, so definitely tulips. The bikes have been impressive. Was there anything specifically about KubeCon that, you know, uh, you, you think it sounds really interesting or cool or whatever? I've loved what I've been hearing about the WebAssembly uh, community mm -hmm. and, and components within WebAssembly, just yeah. seeing it kind of like in, get further and further along as it as it comes to uh, just uh, folks being able to work with that technology. Um, there's been a lot of like whisperings about, oh, is that the next Kubernetes? And at the end of the day, yeah. it's you know a different way to write Do apps. Kubernetes. We've, yeah. we've, we've been chasing that for a long time yeah. too. The right once run anywhere, of course. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, or right wants to bug everywhere. It's yeah. like we're we're gonna find it. We're gonna find it. We're gonna yeah. find the one true ring. You know, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, as long as Gollum's not involved. <laughs> it's like we try to keep him out of our community. Right. Uh, yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, we've ways to deal with that. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, if, if you don't mind uh, slightly offensive terminology, you should look up uh, an old Donnie Burkholz talk about uh, how uh, basically the the he he actually did like some data science around like here is our community before. Then here's our community after we got rid of this troll, um, uh, who was a very strong contributor. Yeah, I shouldn't say troll. Let's say <laughs> like you know somebody who who was not the most uh, pleasant person to be around, um, and yet was a big contributor and so it was like a loss right um but yeah so let's not let Gollum into the the, the, the org if possible 
<laughs> but yeah, it's it, that's that's been wonderful to see. Uh, I've really been excited about that. And then uh, always the hallway track. It's yeah, just uh, yeah. my, my favorite. Yeah. When when I've come to Cube Cons in the past as as an attendee, that was always something I was uh, you know worried about. Was I'd go to the talks and it was kind of expected that you'd come back with a write up, talk about the talks and everything that you learned in them. And so the, it was San Diego is my first in-person KubeCon. Okay. I ended up skipping many of the talks and just going and chatting with folks within the community that I was right. working with. And it was so much more beneficial. Just yeah. that networking yeah. aspect has been, one, is, is always one of my favorite things here. Yeah. Just, yeah. I, you know, I don't live next door to you, so it's great to see we're in the same city as you. Right, so I, I, I was like, well, t actually there's, um, there's somebody who's pretty strongly, mostly in, I guess, the, more the Linux community, but open source in general, uh, Deb Nicholson, um, mm -hmm. who OCI, I think uh, where, where she was at, um, but um, she uh, she and I actually live I don't know like two miles from each other, um, and almost never see each other uh, there at all. But we used to see each other all the time at conferences, uh, which was really very amusing. Uh, but I did want to explain real quickly because I think it's surprising how few people know what the hallway track is. Mm -hmm. um, and so you know a hallway track basically means like the walking around between the sessions and talking to people in the hallway. Um, and uh, it's it's really one of the things that we do with, uh, I run a much smaller conference called DevConf US um, uh, in Boston every year, um, but we offer, uh, what we do is attendee training, or hmm. as well as like speaker coaching or whatever, or attendee coaching, whatever you wanna call it. Um, and uh, so we actually, anybody who kind of signs up, we kind of have them show up in advance, uh, you know, to the equivalent of a Zoom call and, uh, and you know, talk through, okay, this is the kind of stuff you should do before you even get to the conference. And then at the conference, there's like a couple of opportunities where they can kind of uh, meet together and then so you have a little bit of a posse as well, which is kind of nice. And then um, cool. also you have like a coach who kind of drops in and is like, hey, have you done, you know, these five things? This is, you know, and explain things like here's what the hallway track is. Because the, the point of the conference is actually to be like a first conference for either a speaker, which was what its original intent was, but what we found was that it's also kind of, let's try to make it a, a first conference for an attendee as well. Um, so yeah, I think it's I think it's a cool idea, but that's yeah. why I wanted to explain how I track. That's that's so. really cool. I, I would like that concept of being able to educate folks on how to experience the conference yeah, as an yeah. attendee, because you're right, it's not, I, I feel like I've been, I, there's so many I've been to where I've been like, you're yeah, trying to yeah. acclimate, and it's just like, no, you can make it just like code, you can make a framework for this too. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> well, what's funny is that um, I'm, I think I've been going to conferences now like too long or something because I basically only go to the hallway track. Like I, you know, I almost never get an opportunity to actually see a talk or like, eventually, this is what's funny about Friday is that I'm kind of half thinking about going to see the tulips on Friday morning uh, because I won't be here long enough to get really another opportunity. But Friday is the day where I'll actually be able to have everything will have slowed down enough where I can actually go and sit in some talks, you know, <laughs> and, and actually pay attention for a few minutes. Uh, so so it's kind of like this tough balance because periodically I, I like just hearing about tech because I'm yeah. a nerd, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I did want to also ask you, um, because it's funny how much has been coming up, uh, but maybe we'll get back to uh, Wassum after that, because yeah. um, I really like Wassum. But af before that, uh, we keep having, I keep having in the interviews I've been doing for both in the car, but also on the show, backstage just keeps coming up. Um, and I was just kind of curious, like, you know, any, any theories as to why, you know, do you think it's really like fulfilling a need or like, what's your, your experience with it been, you know, I feel like you get the 500 fit view on all these, uh, technologies. So I'm just kind of curious, uh, we're thinking about adopting it, a, but with the program we do for, cause basically we kind of run a, a, a very, um, junior consultancy with the worst turnover of basically 300 people every semester. Uh, so it would be really nice for the continuity of projects. Uh, so to do something like backstage. So I've just kind of, I've been kind of gathering more information about it because it sounds really, really cool. Yeah, so it's it really has been coming up quite a bit and it's the, I, I feel like it's it's the one of the only uh, CNCF projects that's really filling that space as it pertains to uh, internal development platforms. and. Mm -hmm. It's also, I feel like it's coming up quite a bit too because everybody does have an opinion on how to be able to implement that or write a plugin for it and share knowledge or your endpoints, your documentation. Right. It's not always straightforward. Right. It's never straightforward. 
so that's something that is helping make make that easier for for folks. So I think that's definitely I've I've been hearing the same thing with, yeah. with that coming up because uh, even like you said, you know, it, as it pertains to conferences and level setting and trying to figure out how to best experience things, uh -huh. backstage is really helpful for getting folks running much more quickly. Oh, and interesting. Then, and so then you're then, like you're using it to like actually manage the conference? Uh, no, no. Uh, that's um, what I'm saying that would be fantastic. Oh yeah, right. right. <laughs> yeah, if somebody's writing a plug-in, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah how to experience KubeCon. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, that'd be a, a pretty slick. It's yeah. like, yeah, I've seen, I'm going to work on my CFP after this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's kind of gone hand in hand with uh, seeing some more focus on cloud development environments as well. Mm -hmm. And things like code spaces within GitHub. There's yep. people like, how do we get contributions with less friction and also mm -hmm. make it easier for maintainers? There's, there's no shortage of good ideas on how to... Uh, things that we can add to projects or ways to get like a, a you know competency score or a maturity score for a project mm -hmm. like, where is it at how's it doing tests contributions etc but that puts a ton of weight on maintainers right and so things like backstage and, and some other projects uh, you know being able to figure out how to make everything work together is quite helpful yeah 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 for us it's the the continuity uh, you know across teams and and also is basically what we have is like, you know, when you, you think about like, you know, contributor guides on an open source project, you know, we basically have, we have to have an awesome one basically every semester. Um, and because the projects are often, you know, some, uh, you know, sometimes multi-semester, sometimes multi-year, uh, and, you know, kind of being able to get the team back to the place where the last team left off as quickly as possible is really difficult, but they also are, the projects are different enough that, um, you, you can't just uniformly say, okay, it'll be React with, you know, Postgres or whatever. Um, you know, sometimes they're on GitHub, but some, you know, some organizations, they have private repos or they're using, you know, something else altogether, you know, so we have enough variability that we can't just have some stock, you know, uh, model, which is unfortunate. Um, cool. Uh, so yeah, I don't know if we have time to really talk about Wassum. I will say, um, you know, it sounds like you're kind of in the same boat where it's like, um, Wassum, it sounds really fascinating. I think it's really, uh, you know, if you're not looking at it already, uh, you should be, um, because it's got a, it's got a lot of promise. That and, and so many orgs are using it. I've been mm -hmm. like wowed with what Adobe's been working on on that front. Uh, -huh. uh yeah, d definitely not enough time to jump into AI and all that fun right, stuff right. too. But yeah, yeah this it just really, I, I think that's, that's been the, some of the biggest points of fascination here at the conference to S bombs and yeah, yeah. S bombs, edge computing, IDP, all, yeah. all of these things. It's been, it's, I feel like in the past too, it's been like you've heard the thread of at least one like very prominent topic, but now yep. we're starting to splinter and yeah. get in yeah. some like some really good contenders. Well, there. I think, yeah, Wasm in particular is one of those things where uh, it's, um, I, like if you just kind of see it in passing, I don't think people really connect on its power. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so I think as people are starting to be like, oh, I see now, you know, it's really gonna just kind of, you know, just go straight vertical. It's, um, it's e even the the transformative thing being uh, be able to up level older workflows, like mm -hmm. uh, things running in Fortran or Cobol. Yeah. Actual stories, like oh yeah. yeah, we can use Wasm and then run that on an airplane now, and that's right. what we need. And so, kind of encapsulating some of the older things or integrating with older enterprise right. uh, entities that aren't ready systems. for a rewrite per se. Exactly. Yeah. That at least yeah. get, is the shim to then help them get to the next step. Which right. no, nobody wants to write that code ultimately they're like ah oh, okay but yep. that's what's going to truly transform it too and then all then we get to all work on the fun stuff yeah yeah we have to do our chores <laughs> exactly um yeah i'm still holding my breath uh yeah so i hear you well uh thank you so much for the time we really appreciate it uh and uh you know we'll uh, see you around the conference uh and hopefully you have enjoyed your lovely ride around amsterdam in this fancy audi this is great to know thank you so much for having me yeah yeah i think it's a lot of fun uh um, I think we're going to keep doing it. We might do it in Chicago too. So, uh, you know, why not, right? Um, <laughs> Grab some pizza. I won't, yeah. If I get invited back, I won't bring it in the car. I right, promise. right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, see yeah, right. There will be a no pizza rule in the, uh, in the vehicle. Uh, I'm pretty sure that will be a mandate from... Uh,